I thought that love was science fiction until I saw you today. Now that love is my addiction, I've thrown all my books away. I thought love was science fiction until I saw you today. Now that love is my addiction, I've thrown all my books away. When it comes to movies, science isn't an exact science, particularly when it comes to science fiction. Now, when I talk about science fiction in movies, I'm not talking about Hollywood accounting, <laughs> although it is criminally misleading. No, I'm talking about the incredible suspension of disbelief it takes to imagine that the environment could shut down in a few days, that you can terraform a planet in a few seconds, or that Michael Bay can direct a movie. Questionable science began with the first big science fiction movie, George Millay's 1902 epic, A Trip to the Moon. In this film, six adventurers travel in a capsule fired from a large cannon. After their lunar landing, the explorers are kidnapped by disgruntled moon inhabitants, escape to their capsule, nudge it off the moon's edge, and fall back down to Earth where they splash into the Atlantic Ocean. Did you spot the inaccuracy? That's right, Alpha Centauri is in the wrong place. Just embarrassing. The film set many precedents, not just for inaccurate science fiction movies, but across all genres. In fact, having a rocket shoot off into your eye was a brave cinematic feat only emulated several decades later by Ron Jeremy. It was in the late 1930s that science fiction began to take off, thanks to the success of magazines such as Amazing Stories and Astounding Science Fiction. Though considered pulp, these magazines were the birthplaces of Isaac Asimov, Arthur C. Clarke, Robert Heinlein and Frederick Pohl. These guys were no idiots. Asimov was a professor of biochemistry, and Clark basically invented the geostationary satellite system. When they wrote about the future, they were extrapolating science and technology with a genuine eye to things that could actually happen. Over in Hollywood, executives, none of whom had invented a geostationary anything, seemed less concerned with the content of the story than with the characters on the cover. Hollywood science fiction skewed more towards the sci-fi, caring more about silver suits and ray guns than actual science. In the 1930s, Hollywood began adapting comic strips like Flash Gordon and Buck Rogers, which permanently fixed science fiction as being incredibly silly in the minds of the general public. They may be fun to watch whilst baked, but their use of unexplained gases and controlled meteors as credible threats did a lot to strip the science from science fiction. But this began to change when George Powell's Destination Moon took a less pulpy approach to its story and was a bit more cerebral, but no less exciting than the usual fare. This was followed by The Day the Earth Stood Still, This Island Earth, and Forbidden Planet. Parallel to this, the 1950s saw a slew of B-movies that began to take on a strangely metaphorical social commentary. Otherwise silly, easily dismissed pictures suddenly had something to say, and this was expanded upon in the 1960s. That's when the social messages were ramped up, with Planet of the Apes examining racism and culture wars, Fahrenheit 451 looking at the culture of fear and repression, and Alphaville revealing that when the French try to make a science fiction movie, it still looks like every single other French movie. We're going into all this because of an important question that's always bothered me. Why in a genre called science fiction does the science always take such a big hit? It's because of this other word. No. No, that's science again. Yes, fiction. To answer this question, we'll need to take a look at a really bad science fiction movie. Take Armageddon. Now, it's very easy to make fun of this film. So here we go. It's almost impossible to believe the sheer number of factual errors this film contains. There's an asteroid the size of whichever US state is currently being used as a unit of asteroid measurement heading towards the Earth, and no Earth-based telescopes can pick it up? Why is sound travelling so clearly in space? Tell me again how the artificial gravity on the Russian space station is supposed to work? Clearly the science isn't of much concern to the filmmakers, and we have to ask, should it be? If it makes the film better, why not change that which you can change? With special effects, you can break the laws of physics and logic, so why not do it to make a good film? All valid arguments. If Armageddon had been a good film. The thing is, science fiction can be the most exciting of genres, not because it's wildly impossible, but because it's wildly possible. Most science fiction takes the world we know and spins it off in a new direction based on what is possible, but improbable. If you want the impossible, you've got the fantasy genre. 
The idea that a film will be more exciting if you throw the rules out the window ignores almost every example out there. Some of the most scientifically accurate science fiction films ever made include Fritz Lang's Metropolis, 2001 A Space Odyssey, Solaris, and Primer. These films didn't have to throw their accuracy or believability out the window in order to make the stories more exciting. It's because they're believable, and so make us believe that these extraordinary actions can take place, that makes them so exciting and enduring. So, what have we learned? That sometimes Hollywood fudges the science because they don't care. Wait, everyone knows that. Hang on, I need a good tag so it doesn't seem like I just wasted five minutes of your time. Hmm. Okay, science fiction is at its best when it uses the extraordinary to highlight truths about ourselves and the world we currently live in. When the science is accurate and the fiction is possible, isn't that what really makes our imagination soar? Huh, no, this, this isn't special effects after all. Sorry, forget all that. <laughs>